A very very good evening, everybody. Good evening. I am super super excited to be with all of you today and to give a talk today in this esteemed place. I have a firm belief that every place has an energy, and today I'm sure most of you are sitting today. You are already feeling the energy of the place. You're sitting at the mecca of medical education in India. You're sitting in Ames, the most sought after place, and the most sought after place for by patients, by students. So when we are in a place like this, the place itself gives us energy. So when we have this kind of energy, I want all of you to close your eyes and answer a question for me. Can you visualize a mental image of yourself? Can you envision a mental image of yourself right now? And now open your eyes and think about what did you imagine? I'm sure the boy standing sitting in front of you must have thought of Tom Cruise. and somebody must have thought of salman khan but when i look at my own self and when i imagine myself in a mental image this is what i see i see a man digging a tunnel and trying to seek something and this is the kind of image this has been with me since the time i was in school this image has been consistent with me for last 3 decades last 3 decades i always look at myself as a man digging a tunnel trying to seek a treasure now when i was in school i used to think that probably the treasure is getting into medical school i used to think that maybe you know i'm digging a tunnel to reach the medical school but when i actually entered the medical school i i thought that maybe the tunnel is to get out of the medical school then probably it was to get into a specialty when i started my enterprise probably you know i thought maybe it is to reach to certain number of states to open my offices in certain number of cities to have a certain number of students studying with me or a certain kind of a turnover when i wrote my first book i thought maybe i am trying to chase a treasure where you know somebody would actually read it and it kept changing the goal that i was seeking was always changing but the mental image that i had for me was always consistent it was me digging a tunnel looking for a treasure Now, when I look back today, when I look back today, probably what I was seeking, and probably most of you who are today, you know, because we're sitting in Ames, I assume many of you are doctors or medical students, and many of you must have tried to answer this question: What are we really seeking? And when I look back today, I think that we are seeking legacy. Legacy means it is a very human thing; it's a very human desire. It is not there anywhere else in the animal kingdom. animals are more in current that means they are more in present they are only bothered about their present problems it's very unique humanity is the only species where we seek more than our own lifetime we want to have something which is left behind of us when we go away that is called as legacy all the other speakers that you heard before me if you notice a common factor they are all digging a tunnel seeking legacy they want to create something like a gardener who starts a garden who remains even the garden remains relevant even when the person is gone and that's very human so now what i do is when i imagine this image for me now i look at this man i call him as legacy seeker the man is a legacy seeker and the treasure that he is seeking is legacy so let's go back to the beginning so how do you begin this journey of getting you know getting to legacy first step is dreaming and i have in in behind me if you look at it you will see a picture of a large mountain which is enormous because it's a dream dream has to be grand it has to be big it is not a logical business plan that we are making we are making you think of a dream dream has to be big look at the size of the man behind me i look at the size of the mountain you will see the mountain is enormous whenever we begin the journey the first step is you start dreaming and you dream big but many people they get overwhelmed by the dream itself the reason is the enormity of the dream itself it is so big and they get overwhelmed and they give up at this stage so all the people who are listening to me today the first message that if you can have you know because i know this platform is to give you messages which are worth sharing the first message that i want you to have is break the barrier of fear 
if you are afraid, you will not be able to do anything, you will come back. Even before the journey starts, you will leave it. The first barrier to break is fear. When you break the barrier of fear, you start digging the tunnel. Now, when you start digging the tunnel, the key word is, it has to be with enthusiasm. You need childlike enthusiasm to make a difference. And how do I define childlike enthusiasm? When you grow up, you start asking these questions. If I work, will I get it? I am working, but... You understand? If and buts are the words that we learn in adulthood. These are not the words that children use. Children, they continue their progress without thinking of if and buts. So when you enter the tunnel, you start digging with enthusiasm. Many people enter the tunnels and they start digging on the same idea. But not everyone will have the same enthusiasm. Because some tunnels are not meant for us. I will give you an example from my own life. Very few people know that although I am a radiologist now and you know me as a radiologist, after my medical school, I joined neurosurgery in Ames. And when I was digging that tunnel of neurosurgery, I found myself many times outside the operation theater looking at an MRI image. I was more enthusiastic about images than about surgery. And I realized that this is not the tunnel where I can bring my full enthusiasm. Three months into neurosurgery, I left and I joined radiology. So there will be different tunnels which will mean different for different people. You have to find it, the one that makes most sense to you, in one where, where you can give your childlike enthusiasm, you can give full force. So my message number two is, if you break the barrier of fear and you start a journey, you need childlike enthusiasm, which in simple word means no if, no but, we need to go ahead. Now, there is only one problem in these tunnels. And this is very important for all of you to understand. Because I have learned it the hard way. You can only dig these tunnels in the daytime. In the night time, you have to go back and meet other people. Other people who are comfortable in their status quo. Like the speaker before me mentioned, that there will be many people who are comfortable with the status quo. And when you come out of the tunnel and you meet them, they look at you with curiosity, sometimes with mockery. When I started my journey as an entrepreneur and I was working day and night, I met a friend of mine who said, you know, why are you working? I could not explain because I was young. I'm still young, but I could not explain to him. So he said, yeah, I can watch a test match. That was the era of test matches. So he said, I can watch a test match sitting in my bedroom with a remote. I don't need to work. Why are you working? So next day, when I came back to the tunnel, I could not dig with the same enthusiasm because he had planted a seed of self-doubt in me. So I call this as the middle of the tunnel syndrome. And I'm sure many of you are, who are today medicos or you know uh, engineers or professionals in the middle of your school, you start feeling this. Am I really good enough? Is it worth it to dig the tunnel? Should I move ahead? You have self-doubt. And as soon as the seed of self-doubt is planted in your heart, you start getting insecure. What if there is no treasure in the end? What if I waste my life doing nothing? What if people would remember me only as a you know somebody who dug tunnels and got nothing? You get insecurity. So these are the two demons that you meet in the middle of the tunnel. You meet self-doubt, you meet insecurity. Many people give up at these this level. Now what I've learned is the only way to pass the middle of the tunnel is you need two forces. Number one is, before you decide to give up in the middle of the tunnel, you need to take a pause and you need to look at how far you have come. You need to think how far I have come. And you need to be grateful for the journey so far. This is called as power of gratitude. Once you bring this power into your body, now you start feeling more optimistic about future because you have come so far. That is power of gratitude. Second power you need is power of perspective. You need to have faith in the bigger plan. You need to have faith that we are here for a purpose. And you are, by digging this tunnel, you are fulfilling your personal legend. You need to have power of perspective, power of gratitude to go further. And you keep digging further. Now the 
entire problem is in the next slide. I want you to now look at it that when you go further, when you go further and when you are you know, digging further, you will reach almost to your destination, almost to your destination. But this is where you meet the third enemy and the final enemy, which is very important. When we are digging a tunnel, when we are trying to build a legacy, you reach to a point where you start feeling the fatigue. You start getting tired. You start getting pain in your muscles because you've been working so hard always. This is the most dangerous point in the entire journey. This is the point where a lot of people give up. I'm sure you, many of you who would be in final years or the final final points in the match this point where people give up i want to give a popular example here we all know messi the famous football player who won the world cup recently few years back when he was uh, playing a south american league uh, south south american cup he missed out on a penalty he was tired he thought there is no legacy to be made in that triangle of self doubt insecurity fatigue he almost gave up. So it's not just normal routine humans who give up. Legends like Messi also think about giving up. You may not believe it right now, but you know, it happened. He decided to give up. So the riskiest part of the journey is when you are right next to the treasure, it is likely it is that the fatigue will hit you. The tiredness hits you. And you start questioning every decision that you have taken. When we are tired, all our previous powers, all our thought processes are clouded. They are clouded by tiredness. I am sure you must have experienced this when you do a 24 hour duty in a college. At the nth hour, your decision making is clouded. Now, many people, I know many people who give up at this point. Now, what is the risk at giving up at this point? You are almost there. You are almost there. What is the risk? The risk is not in missing out. Don't get me wrong. Risk is not in missing out. The risk is that once you come out of the tunnel so close to the treasure, you do not come back empty handed. You come back with baggage of regrets. And now when you come back, you are not the same person who entered the tunnel. You entered the tunnel with enthusiasm, childlike enthusiasm. You believed treasures, you believed Harry Potter, you believed everything. Now suddenly you don't believe anything because you have given up, you have regrets. So when you come out with regrets, you change as a person. And the risk is that you become somebody you never wanted to become. I'll explain to you. I have a term, a very specific term that I use for, I, I call a class of people as clock, clock gazers. Clock gazers. If you go to an admin block in any department, you will meet these clock gazers. You go to them for some work, they will look through you at the clock. You ask them to do something, they will say come next week and they are only waiting for clock to strike 4 and they want to go home. In the home, you know, they are again waiting for clock to strike 9 because they want to escape from home also. <laughs> so ultimately, what happens is when you come out of the tunnel with regrets, you become somebody you never wanted to become. You become negative, you doubt everything, you don't believe in treasures, you don't believe in possibility of anything big happening. This is the point which is the riskiest point. This is where you need to go forward and make it happen. Yeah. And I want to share with you today, in my journey as a student, as a doctor, as an entrepreneur, as an author, every time I've gone through all these stages and every time when I hit the final thing and I reach there, there is a moment of happiness. There is a moment of happiness and I feel happy about it that I've reached there. You know, when I my first book, and incidentally, that's called as fire in the belly, as last speaker mentioned. It's called a fire in the belly. When I had the first review of the book, I was super excited about it. But then, suddenly after that, it was momentarily pleasure. After that, it was a void. Instead of feeling like a destination, it felt like a new beginning. And I'm sure you know many of you who entered the medical school as a destination have felt this. Same feeling when you, you know, you were told that you reach there and you get the, you get the treasure. But suddenly when you reach there, it feels, it feels like a new beginning. It feels empty. My heart feels empty. I want to do more. But this is my destination. Why am I feeling more? Now, and this is where, you know, I was very confused. 
when I was invited for this talk. This is the part where I had no answer. Like, why does the end feel so empty? Why does the destination actually feel so empty? And I had no answer. I had no, you know, you know, statement to give to you. And I was very confused for last one month. Last one month, I had no answer to it. Two weeks back, I was on an airport. I was coming back from taking a lecture. I met a young couple and their son. They walked up to me and the boy said, Sir, I was your student in 2005. And this is my son. I said hello to the child. He said, Sir, sometimes I motivate him in the words you used to use in the classes at those times. I'm using the same words for my own son. I was overwhelmed. Overwhelmed that my words that I randomly spoke 2005 could cross a generation and stay there. One week later, a friend of mine called me up and he called me up to thank me. He said, Sumer, my son is your student. He's learning radiology from you. He's in final, final year of medical school and his mother fell down from a scooter and they did a MRI of the brain and neck to be on the safe side. On that MRI, that boy discovered a lymph node which was missed by the radiologist because radiologists were looking for injuries and that boy saw a lymph node in the neck and finally a medical student and led to discovery of an occult thyroid malignancy in his mother. She was operated upon early and she was cured. Now, when I heard all this, suddenly it struck me what I wanted to say to you in the end. What I've learned in life is that we are all seeking destinations. Probably it is not about the destinations at all. Probably it is about the journey. Probably it is about the lives that we touch. The, our words go into the hearts of those people. And not only those people, we create ripples of impact on the people they will touch in further on, which I never realized. And then I realized, and this is the message that I wanted to share through this mega event today is, it is not about the it is not about the destination it is not about what you will get in the end it is about what we become in the end and it is about the ripples of the impact that we create in our life thank you very much